Paper was like gold in medieval times. Oh, not tobacco. Sugar. That everything we thought we knew about the world might turn out to be completely wrong. schemes of yours, but this time you've gone too far. You're going to jail. After all, I've done for him. Done for me? Your finagling's cost my syndicate a quarter of a million dollars. Why, well, Mr. Murdoch? We finance you to mill lumber in Wisconsin, but you stashed it away for a timber steel in California. According to the new landlord, strictly legal. All I know is what you cost us. You're going to land in prison till we get it back. Now, putting me in prison is a sure way of losing all your money. Now, what's a couple of hundred thousand to a group like yours? Let me take a boatload of my boys out there and I'll make a fortune for you. Listen to those men. Why, well, you haven't met a payroll in weeks. Do you think they'd ever work for you again? They like me. <laughs> you do too, don't you? What makes you think I'd trust you again? Because your syndicate wants money and there's plenty to be had in California. Hey, Jim. What is it, Frenchy? Boys are mighty close to getting out of hand. Look, Mr. Murdoch, you better let me get the boys under control before they wreck the mill and you'll be out another 50,000. Uh, Daisy, honey, take Mr. Murdoch over to the hotel. The best champagne for him and his friends. I just happen to have a couple bottles in the oven. You come along, too, Sheriff. I have a few girlfriends who just love policemen. Don't forget, Fallon. I can put you in jail six months from now just as well as today. boys. Certified cashier's check. Ah, you gave us that check business before. Yeah, we want to see the cash. Where's the money? Yeah, we want to see the cash. Where's the money? All right, boys. Anything you say goes. Frenchy, take this check to the bank. Have them send over a couple of guards with the cash. Go on. You heard them. They want their money. Get to the bank. You know what this means, fellas? They're breaking up the team. For good. Jim Fallon and his boys. The minute you sign that receipt book paid in full, that's the end. You leave me busted. You put me out of business. Good thing it is, Fallon. It's about time to pay him off once and for all. Let him come back to work for us honest lumbermen. Steady work and regular pay. 
We've had enough of you, Fallon. You're leaving town, and right now. Yeah. A couple of measly bobcats turned tigers. We're not joking, Fallon. Get going. I'm moving no place till I'm ready. Get him out of here. That was Go great, Jay. All right, all right. All right. Yeah. What a wonderful yeah. yeah. Boys, even if I'd been shot, it'd have been worth it to know how you feel about me. You still like me. And now I want to tell you why I hoped it'd stick with me. You know me. Jim Fallon doesn't like to hire, he likes to share. And right now, I want to share with you the whole north of California. There's giant redwoods out there, men big around as that office. So tall, you can't see the sky. There's so much board footage in just one of those big trees that it makes a month's cutting here look like a pile of toothpicks. Now look, you're the best lumberjacks in the business. That's why you're my team. And that's why I want to take you to California with me. Each man a partner of Jim Fallon and every man with a share in a hundred million dollars. How do you like that, boys? Do you still want Frenchie to go to the bank? No! Will you take your chances with me? I will. Yeah, me too, me I will. Me too, you might find a couple of cases in the office. Help yourself. Hey, it's all right. All right. Yeah. It's okay. Let's go. You're okay. Hey, stranger. I don't have to tell you how grateful I am, stranger. I'm Yukon Burns. Your name's Luck to me. I want to make a little statue of you and hang it right alongside this horseshoe. You could hang me there, huh? Plum hollow inside. <laughs> I'll put some stuff in you. You stick with me, friend, and you'll always have a full belly. Come on. Alaska gold rushing, huh? Yukon Burns, the billionaire, traveling around in freight cars trying to get a logging job. You got yourself a better job than that. For life. Kinda like me, don't you? Like the way you square toted with your men, stood up to them gun toters. Here. Now yeah, keep it learned. Honest, huh? Besides being handy with a gun, I can use a friend like you, Lucky. Hey, Jim. them hawkers to keep their nose out of my business. Here, uh, wet this. Lamb. Lamb. Sorry, I didn't count on the shooting either, but everything worked out just fine. Thanks. That'll learn you to keep your big mouth shut. Come on, you got. Right with you, Yukon. Well, your pigeon is thoroughly cooked and basted in white wine. He's all yours. I don't know what I'd do with that. I don't care anymore. Just pay. Daisy, honey, don't you trust me? Oh, don't Daisy, honey, me. You prefer Dora Fig? You lay off my past or I'll start to steal yours. Forget the past, think of the future. That's nothing. We're gonna get very rich in California. We'll leave next month. Not we, not me, you. Honey, you're part of my luck. Oh, say that, Barani, for when you head into those wild westerners. You won't be pushing around a bunch of these tame Wisconsin stump jumpers. Don't think those Californians are going to sit around in their rocking chairs and watch you grab off their land. I'll handle that problem when I come to it. Without me. You'll be right there looking out for me, same as always. Always is over, Jim. I'm tired of chasing those smoke rings of yours. I'm staying here, and I'm looking out for me. You're right, Daisy. You do a lot better without me. You said it. I'm no good for you. You're doing a smart thing giving me up. I'm, I'm just bad for you. Believe me, Daisy. 
You should have a life of your own. Thanks. Thanks for everything. Jim Fallon likes ever leaves him. That goes for you, too. Here's your job. I'm gonna dress you up like a billionaire. You're going to Redwood, California ahead of me. Goodwill merchant. Pick the biggest tree. Just flash that on his face at the hostile neighbor. Hostile? Why? Hope you ain't counting on me using this. When a man's my friend, I count on him for anything. California. Only in my dreams. Why did you send that Alaska sourdough out ahead of me? Let's face it, Frenchie. You're a good timber boss. But people say goodbye to you before you can say hello. That you got. Three weeks in Redwood and he's got him eating out of his hand. Yeah, I got a feeling he's gonna bring me plenty of good luck. Enough, Mr. Keller. I hope so. Look here, Keller. You can't keep refusing to let these men file new timber claims. I'm the government agent here, Mr. Gregg, not you. On that door, it says office hours, 8 to 6. You're opening up again right now. I stay friendly, neighbor. Oh, Fallon's man, Burns. I'm Cleve Gregg. You're just another claim jumper to me, mister. That's because you're new here. I own the Redwood Sawmill Company, and I aim to finance these men file for homesteads. New law wasn't made for timber thieves. What do you mean, thieves? Every lumberman around here has a copy of that law. All claims filed under the Stone and Timber Act of 1868 are hereby rendered null and void. Land agents, that's you, Keller. I hereby authorized and instructed to accept applications on any and all such claims in their districts. If you have $125. I know all about that, Mr. Gregg. Just the same, I'm waiting for more instructions from the Department of the Interior before I let you steal homesteads my friends have owned for 50 years. $125 filing fee for each quarter section is stealing. This fellow's been scouting the biggest trees in the county, and he's probably bribed you to wait until Fallon and his men get here to file on choice claims. Jim Fallon's an honest man. He's going to pay the old settlers for every claim he stakes out. Did you hear that, Jim? Pay him for free land. He's been doing a lot of expensive goodwilling around here. He knows what he's doing. Now, get this through your head, Keller. You're opening this office right now, or I'll have you jailed. No, you won't. Pay no attention to him, Mr. Keller. Keep me away from Byron's sister, Alicia. What are they all dressed up for? There's a hallelujah colony around here. Soul savers, rigid and religious. The dark haired one can save my soul anytime. Open that office and I'll have my boys break the door down. You do and you'll walk in on your face. Keller, you're going to start taking applications right now. Come on, boys. Sister Chadwick, no. Stay with us. Hold your ground, Mr. Keller. Be firm. I'm going to Eureka and tell this to the circuit judge. I'll tote you across for 50 cents, ma'am. No, thank you. Well, seeing as how you're bow-legged, too big. I am not bow-legged. Alicia! No, you're not. Mr. Chadwick, thy father shall hear of this. There, now, isn't that worth it? Here's your coat. Thank you, ma'am. Ah, Sister Chadwick. Where's your Mr. Fallon? 
I came to thank both of you for protecting our land. That Fallon's a wonderful lad, ma'am. I'm sure he could teach you manners. That's Jim Fallon. Oh. Pleased to meet you, Miss Chadwick. Mrs. Chadwick. Oh. Just like I told you, you don't need to worry about your trees no more. Jim here's going to do the claiming. He's got plenty of money. In fact, he invented the stuff. Why haven't you refiled on your land? Multiply 400 quarter sections by $125, and you'll see how much we'd have to pay. 400 quarter sections and broke? You must be pretty poor operators. None of these religious colonists ever bother to accumulate much cash. There's no need to. See, Jim, these are wonderful folks. They'll give you anything they got. They haven't got anything to give you, and they'll say a prayer for you. Sister Chadwick, you think prayer is going to save those big trees? We were assured we could rely on you for that. We don't want them touched. What's so special about them? Well, after you've been around them a while, you'll understand. Sister Alicia, come the away from all those men. There's safety in numbers, Sister Blackburn. Say, by the way, whatever happened to your bees and vows? Sister Chadwick has been too long out in the world. I'd like you to meet my father, Mr. Fallon. Won't you have supper with us this evening? I'd like to. I'll meet you at six in the Bixby Grove. Mr. Burns knows the way. I'm anxious for you to see our trees. Thank you. This must be good luck. I've known a lot of gals. This is the first time one of them ever asked me to come up and see her trees. I thought this trip was supposed to be strictly business. There's a lot of ways of doing business. What are all these promises I hear you've been making? Just plain common sense. Yukon, I'd feel a lot better if you'd walk me home. Well, I'm glad to bodyguard you any time. Hey, Lucky. I want to talk to you. Meet me in the saloon. You better get rid of that daffy sourdough. Or he gets you hooked for money he ain't got. I ever had to ask your advice? Look. I passed up top jobs to Woods Boss, your timber grab. You promised you'd make a killing. All I hear now is some idiot promising to pay. Pay for something you can get for nothing. Nobody's gonna pay. As soon as that bull brings in our loggers, I'll run them into the land office and file. Nobody's gonna pay. Lucky. Thanks. Biggest, oldest living things in the whole world. Make you feel kind of small? Nope. Big. I'm the one that's going to knock them down. The widow Chadwick and her folks don't want these trees touched at any price. She's a widow, huh? What's the difference? When you grow up, I'll explain it to you. Who was Chadwick? A young seafaring fella. Here he lost his life at sea a few years ago. I bet there's a hundred houses in one of these. Look, Jim. Yeah? These colonists trust in you on account of what I've told them about you. You play square with them and you'll do all right. Bet I will. Twenty-eight and a half feet. This is just a baby. Hello. Right on time. Sister Chadwick, thou hasn't been out of my thoughts a minute. I hope you're both hungry. I look forward to thy home cooking. Then it will please thee to know that thou shalt help with the washing of the dishes to make thee feel that our home is fine. It's a lovely walk. Mr. 
Tom, this is my father, Elder Bixby. How do you do, sir? Welcome, friend. Brother? Mrs. Blackford, Mrs. Wallace. We met, practically. Brother George. How do you do? On the roof, Brother William. And Brother William's daughter. Magnificent country. It's different from Wisconsin, huh? Yes, it is. I've never been stirred as deeply as by your beautiful trees. And his daughter. Then you can understand how we feel about them. Why we hold them in sacred trust. Sacred? Somebody's bound to get them by claiming. Not if we can help it. I'm certain we can place faith in Mr. Fallon and Mr. Burns to help us keep them from destruction. If I felt like you did about trees, I'd soon be out of business. The giant sequoias are more than trees, friend. They are the everlasting living sign of our Creator's work. 4,000 years old, as old as the book and the place. This was just a little one, only 900 years old. But it was a living sapling when the Norman conquerors invaded England. It was about this size when Columbus discovered America. About this large, the time of George Washington and our Declaration of Independence. This marks the time of Abraham Lincoln and the Emancipation Proclamation. It was felled during the term of our present president, Mr. McKinley. God made them to touch the sky, taller than any spire of any church. They are our church, our place of worship. Mr. Fallon will build you a dozen churches. Let's be practical. You men cut timber. The small trees are all we cut. The giant redwoods we do not. The government passed a death sentence on every tree in the district. We know you'll help us. I admire your faith. A real home. Where do you sit? We ladies eat later. As it should be. Mr. Fallon, will you sit here? Oh, thank you. <laughs> What's your name? His name is Tom. Well, no wonder he likes me. <laughs> While the ladies are setting the meal, we'll read from the scriptures. It is our custom to ask the stranger in our house to do the reading. Oh, uh, naturally, uh, well, of course. Perhaps Mr. Fallon would rather quote from memory. It's safer if I read. I've been known to get my verses mixed. Um, here, from the Psalms of David. Blessed is he that considereth the poor. The Lord will deliver him in time of trouble. Amen. 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 Blessed is he that considereth the poor. You big hard head, what'd you get me into? You got me into it. You sent me out here. Look here, Jim. Just how much are you going to pay these folks for this land? Lucky, you better start getting yourself some common sense. Do you realize how much it costs to operate a timber outfit? I can't afford to pay for thousands of acres of free land and still run a business. But I gave him a word, and you? Once, last, and for all. There's not going to be any payment for any land the government says is free. You sound like a claim jumper to me. If you know what a sourdough thinks of that stripe, you don't want me around. Hey, where are you going? Back to Alaska to get me some fresh air. How lucky. Nobody Jim Fallon likes ever leaves him. I'm kind of superstitious about my luck running out on me. Look, you, you got the wrong slant. It ain't something you can wear on a watch chain. It ain't even money in your kick. Nine times out of ten, it's the way you live. Look who's talking about living. When I picked you up, you were a job-hunting, empty-bellied crumb. Look at you now, you're just beginning to live. But it's going to be my way. Why, you stinking claim jumper? Oh, now, take it easy. Get out of my way! Now, take it easy. <laughs> take it easy. <laughs> Lucky. You win, Lucky. I'll pay them premium for the land. And you won't cut the big trees? Oh. 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 
Sorry, Jim. I'll get you a doctor. trying to do what you don't have to. Well, that's very nice apple butter. How much do the other tell you to hold out for? I've told you we're only interested in saving these giant trees. Not your money. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. I didn't say anything about money. Just percentage. Percentage of what you own? Or what someone else owns? Mr. Chadwick, my conscience is clean. All right, another half percent. What's your conscience name? Mr. Yukon Burns? This is a very good place to talk about conscience. This is our church. Let's lay off the pious price hiking and admit the trees are trees and money's money. You folks stand to make a million. You're right. Some trees are trees. beautiful. Never. Certainly there's enough timber around here without you destroying these. I live by the board foot. Doesn't all this beauty mean anything to you? Beauty? Sure. That's what it's all about, sister, since the beginning of the world. That's what makes men fresh the wheat, the grapes, hire a band. All the sweat of men at the fort on earth has been for beauty. The beauty of women. Yeah, that's the buggy whip that drives us, Alicia. You know what I mean? I certainly do. You're wasting all the pretty words. Not words. Time. You're wasting time as well as words. I gotta hand it to you, Widow Chadwick. You know how to put a man on ice. Why not? Business should be practical and cold. So let's be practical. Lumberman, look. How tall? Five feet, five and a half. 213 feet. How big around? 24 waist. 16 feet. Total footage? Wonderfully proportioned. Roughly uh, 33,000 square feet. And every inch alive. $14 per thousand board foot delivered in San Francisco. You got soft lips. Now it takes five times as much labor to market one of the big trees as one of the little ones. And there's only three times as much lumber. Therefore, the giants aren't nearly as profitable. You haven't been kissed nearly enough. I said profitable, Mr. Fallon. You ought to understand that. Uh-huh. You're quite a mathematician to solve this problem. Either you take 3% or I'm taking your land. Like it says in the Bible, the Lord helps him who helps himself. Then you'll need a lot of help. I've got it. A boatload. Oh, we're thankful you're here. I hurried all the way from Eureka. 
Still swarming with boomers, I see. They mean to claim our land. Well, we'll see what can be done. I thought you were going to file in the names of the colonists, Mr. Fallon. That was yesterday. My boys are filing. I want those application blanks. I've got the cash right here to cover all of them. Just a minute, Keller. Judge Crenshaw, must I take these applications? Yes, from anyone mean enough to use this land grabber's law. Can't Mr. Keller wait? Maybe some of us can raise the filing cost. He can't wait. I know claim law. You've got to have a place in line. Let's have those application blanks. Step up, boys. Fill in those blanks and duplicate. Baron, this is subterfuge with intent to defraud. Filing under dummy signatures. These men aren't dummies. I'm only loaning them the money. Are you willing to go on record that's illegal? No, I'm not. But the court will go thoroughly into the case. Suits me fine. By that time, the logs will be off and the court can have the stumps. Jim, you've got to let them keep the big redwoods. I came here to get the big ones. You'll never get them. We could have cut enough timber to raise our filing fees, but we believed you, Mr. Burns. We trusted you because of him. But that's past, Mr. Fallon. We know you now. And with the help of the Lord, somehow we'll stop you. So far, you've made a liar out of me. But hand back every one of them application blanks. There ain't going to be any filing of any kind here. You win again, Lucky. Keller, go ahead with those applications. I beat you half to death once. Now I'm going to finish the job. Please don't try it, Yukon. Right. Don't do it, Lucky. Keep out of there. Here's your boat fare. I hear there's still gold in Alaska. I'm staying here. Then you'll get hurt again. About time you got yourself straight on that sourdough. I'd never treat a timber boss of mine like that. Let's you and I have a drink sometime. It's a better time than now. And wash us clean of hatred, our father, that we may call no man our enemy. Make our faith in thee to be without question of thy will, that we may live the words of the scripture. Love the Lord with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy might. Amen. Thou art always welcome amongst us, but... But I can't lick Fallon alone. Now, you've got some mighty hefty boys here, and if you'd use them the way the Lord suggests, that's right, Yukon. Hush, let him get his testimonial. Well, I've been a wicked man in my time, with a weakness for drink and cards and other trifles. But I've done some reading of the book. And when it says, love thy neighbor with all thy heart and with all thy soul, that's great. But if it's not enough, it tacks on with all thy might. And that means might. And that there's fighting talk. It's the only kind Jim Fallon will ever understand. Violence is not in our creed. Yeah, I know. And I believe in turning the other cheek. But you just about run out of cheeks. It's time you started growing some religious muscles. Thou dost not understand our covenants. Well, appears not. But, but where I come from, the Lord didn't build strong back to, to, let, to let wickedness seize the earth. Whatever we do, Mr. Burns, will be done in conformance with the law. But Mr. Fallon is using the law to take our land. The Lord will not fail us. Well, it's no use. Thanks anyhow, Elder, for letting me voice my 
theology. Father. The book of Job, ninth chapter, 22nd verse. They that hate thee shall be clothed with shame. I'm Judge Crenshaw. I've been looking for you. I got something I want to talk to you about. So have I. Well, then, hop in, both of you. We'll go over to your place where we can talk in private. Mr. Burns, I heard you were an honest man and good with a gun. And I also heard you confess to a weakness for liquor, cards, and women. Not women, Your Honor. They ain't for the weak. One of the principal reasons for my coming to Redwood was to appoint a marshal. Marshal? Well? You got one, Judge. Then that's settled. Congratulations, you come. I guess this gives him the power to stop Jim Fallon. Well, it won't keep those applications of his from being mailed to Washington. It would take an act of God to stop that. Uh, Judge, just how would a legal man define an act of God? Well, I'd say any cataclysm, which was not caused by the human hand. Cataclysm? Has it got anything to do with cats? Nice, kitty. Chadwick. Good evening. Taking up with four-footed beasts, eh? Don't blame you what I've seen of the two-legged kind. Don't you think the new marshal was an excellent choice? Mr. Burns is a good man. Transferred Fallon's clay money out of here into the bank. Didn't want it to reflect on me if anything happened. I brought a letter of protest written by Judge Crenshaw, stating his opinion of our rights in this case. He wants a copy forwarded to Washington, along with every one of Jim Fallon's applications. Marvelous. It's getting late and I'm awfully hungry. That's a lot of copying. Well, I'll get started on it. You go home and eat. Thanks. Uh, do you mind if we open a window? It's rather stuffy in here. I'll do it. Better lock up after me. See you later, Miss Alicia. your cat. Get away now. This is dog food. What happened? It was my cat, Mr. Keller, getting out of the way of two stray dogs. Hmm. Don't blame the cat at all. Kitty, kitty. Stand there and watch it burn? Well, it's quite a sight. My applications are in there. Your claim money was transferred to the bank, Fallon. I'm the only loser. It's burning down my courtroom. I see.
suppose no one thought of calling the fire department. How'd it happen? Accident. For a cat. Dear sister, you're not the sweet child I first knew. Me neither, Jim. Let him that stole steal no more. Rather let him labor working with his hands the thing which is good. Ephesian. First floor line 26. 28. Kelly, you better wire Washington tonight for a new batch of application blanks. What's your hurry? You can't file again until they send duplicate title records. That takes time. That is the most satisfying act of God I've ever had the pleasure of witnessing. Judge, I demand you appoint a marshal to investigate. I've appointed one. Marshal Burns, will you kindly look into this case? Marshal Burns? Yep. There's not much I can do about an act of God. I cite your precedent, Mr. Fowler. The Chicago case of Mrs. O'Leary's cow. Of course, we're not quite so big as Chicago. We've only got a cat. Right, Jimmy. You so rightly said, the Lord helps him who helps himself. We'll raise the money for the filing fees by cutting and selling timber. That fire doesn't change a new law. Your flock can't work property they don't own. Mr. Fallon's right. That's the law. I'll follow the law to the letter, Jim. That's all I want. Looks like you'd have to train that cat to steal trees. of the United States government. How do the defendants plead? Guilty. 30 days of hard labor. Marshal, I remand the prisoners to your custody and order you to see that the following sentence is carried out. They are to cut timber on government property. The logs are to be transported to Tidewater here at Redwood. Your Honor, what do you intend to do with those logs? Well, uh, section 7, paragraph 18 of the penal code states, trinkets, or other saleable objects produced by prisoners may be sold. And the money is therefrom given to them at the time of their release as an aid to rehabilitation. Logs 40 feet long are not trinkets. This court is serving the ends of justice, sir, and you are held in contempt. Marshal, collect the gentleman's fine, $100. All right. But for $100, I want to say something. $200? Any further remarks, I'll make it three. Put this in your safe. The more than cover the fine. Court's adjourned. In the next 30 days, we must do six months' work. Night and day. And even on the Sabbath, we'll be lifting the ox from the ditch. You'll need $50,000 to save our land. Marshal, will you kindly rush the uh, prisoners to the woods?
I'll claim money. My old lady and the kids are having a rough at home. Like I told you, you just have to wait for your money. That's no good. The partnership is fine on paper, but I need some cash. That goes for me, too. All the money I've got in the bank, I'm saving for more claim filing. Bunch of the boys are talking about heading back. Nobody wants to stay. That's the truth. Breaking up the team again, huh? Well, this time you can't leave, men. When the new application blanks get here, I'll need every one of you. The boys don't feel good about that either. About what? They don't like the raw deal you're giving these natives. What's the matter with you birds? Getting gooey? We came out here to work, not to steal. This is strictly legal. Yeah? There's a lot of talk that it ain't. Frenchy, take the boys over to the saloon. It won't work, Jim. All right. I'll meet you at the bank. Get out of here. That's That's all right. Right. Now you're Let's go. Once you start that, they'll start hitting every week or so. Won't take long to whittle down your capital. Thinking again, huh? Yeah, Jim. Remember that sawmill man, Greg? He'd be a pretty soft partner for a smart fellow like you. Stop thinking so hard, Frenchy. You'll have to get yourself a bad headache. Fallon's getting down to a shoestring. He's finally dipped into his claim money. Here's where I steer him to you for financing. You mean I finally get an introduction to the great Jim Fallon? Well, the Fallon Company becomes LaCroix and Greg. You call the shots, Frenchy. We're with you. Your soft partner draws a pretty hard contract. He really doesn't need you. It's a good deal, Fallon. Stop bluffing, Greg. Deceased. I get it. If anything happens to me, the Fallon Company goes to you two, huh? Sign it, Jim. Greg here will relieve funds to your account. Just want you to know I can see through that swamp you call a brain. Jim's always suspicious. Well, you won't shove any knives in my back because you'll never get a stick to Tidewater without me. How do you mean? That little secret is my life insurance. But do you mind looking after these girls till the rest of their baggage arrives? Yeah. Oh, you have to call a number to Stop waiting, baby. <laughs> My, you're strong. <laughs> I've been sick. <laughs> The drinks are on the company. Talking machine. Not bad. Are any of these boys married? <clears throat> I could drink your slipper full of white mule. Take Aggie. She's from Texas. Here. Fill it up. <laughs> Little Dorothy. Uh, 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 uh. I've been dreaming of you for days. I used to dance on a beer cake for dimes. Mm, remember that big, swell-headed lumberjack who never had the dime? We're doing all right now, honey. Say, how's it feel to be queen of Redwood City? Fine, if you're the king. The same old Jim. Daisy, honey, we're going to be rich. Very rich. Just sign these, Dorothy. Yep. The same old Jim. What kind of larceny is it this time? Yeah, those wild westerners you warned me about try to cut my throat. This is just to give me a little protection. Mm-hmm. It's lucky for you I learned to write instead of read. Thanks, Dal. Jasper, you saw the lady sign these, notarize them. for a nice, warm bath. The tub's down the hall. What? Well, I'll be seeing you, honey. What? Oh, look, I'm going to Sacramento for a couple of days. You make yourself at home. Uh, Frenchie will look after you. Frenchie Lacroix? Sure. Be nice to him. 
Come in. Oh. Uh, Miss Fisher, may I present uh, Sister Chadwick? It's a tambourine, honey. I'm sorry, Jim. I didn't mean to intrude. Well, Daisy's an old friend. He means well seasoned. Oh. I came to tell you we've cut enough timber. Our logs will soon be at tidewater. Our faith has been realized. We'll be able to keep our land. But my father and I wanted you to know if, if you want to stay here and work, we'll help. Goodbye, Miss Fisher. Goodbye, Jim. Jim, huh? Lucky for you, my father never owned a shotgun. What about hers? Believe me, Daisy, I'd rather have my head shot off by a fig than my soul saved by a Bixby. Have fun, girl. Rattling around in that head of yours. Look, Daisy. Jim's out of town. He's up to something. You're part of it. What's going on? Why don't you ask Jim when he gets back? I'm paying cash money for information. I have a notion to tell Jim about this. <coughs> you sty on the eye of a flea, on the thigh of a nit, on the neck of a gnat. <laughs> seeing things. Fret Dam wasn't there last week. Not like that it wasn't, but the foundation's been there since the old mining days. Fallon. Jim Fallon. Well, he's sure got the colonists blocked. Not just the colonists. Nobody's running any more logs to Tidewater without my say-so. But we're partners. Correct. And I've got you right where you thought you had me. You bought that dam with my money. Well, I don't own it. I just got permission to control the river with it. Fallon, you've gone too far. No. My good health is very important to you boys. Anything happens to me, the owner of that dam will see that you never get a log to market. Oh, by the way, I brought back another surprise for you from Sacramento. Be in town this afternoon. I have an appointment with Judge Crenshaw. Well, franchise for the dam is valid. Buyer property right established by the miners when this was gold rush country. We've got to locate the owner. I'm sure if he knew what it means. Well, the owner's a woman, Dora Fig. Dora Fig? Sacramento Post Office Box is the only address. I'm sorry, there's nothing I can do. Absolutely nothing. Thank you, Judge Crenshaw, for making that clear. Sure so help me, Jim. I can hardly keep this gun from going off right in your face. Don't blame me. You're the one that led these sheep right into the middle of this wolf fight. Judge Crenshaw, this is for you. From the head of the Department of Interior. 
It is my considered opinion that the Fallon Company can, without penalty, proceed to take possession of and clear their land. You mean they can cut down our trees? I'm afraid they can. Frenchy, you and Greg set the boys to work right now, possessing and clearing the land. You see, Sister Chadwick, you and your friends could have made a pile of money. Did you ever learn any other word except money? You're getting in a rut, Jim. You better look out, because when a rut gets deep enough, it becomes a grave. You got a couple of partners liable to put you in it. be by thy will, then to thy higher judgment we bow. Open the hearts of each of us to speak forgiveness for these men of greed who have not been touched by thy understanding. Amen. Don't take any back talk. We've got the law with us. It's their hard luck. The murder. Fallon's company. He gets life for murder. We get the company. The years that grew into these trees make them long and tedious to saw. There's time to get our friends, Judge Crenshaw and the Marshal. Go on. Hurry. with you men. You undercut that tree to hit the cabin. That's right. Stop the sawing. Where's the Bixby's? How should I know? I'm sorry, but you may lose your house. Company, Fallon. 
You're the man that'll have to face the indictment for murder. Trying me already, huh? No, you'll get a fair trial, but not from me. I'm prejudiced. I'll have to disqualify myself. But you'll get your justice. Take him to Eureka and hold him without bail. Dallin will hang for this. What? It was premeditated murder. True. He meant my father no harm. Jim Bellon risked his life trying to save him. I saw him. You saw him too. Well, he's still responsible for the actions of the Fallon Company. His own woods boss will testify against him. I'll testify for him. Marshal! Let Fallon go. Can't hold a man to answer when the chief witness is for the defense. Release him. Thanks. My people forgive those who trespass against us. My father, most of all. Jim's life. Well, why you care? Anybody shoot Jim Fallon be the most popular fella in town. You're the marshal. Don't let it happen. Why? Just don't let it happen. Well, by golly, I... Hey, you're not in love with that no good, are you? Well, girl, you're crazy. You see a big Tom Leopard out in the woods and you don't get close. That is, unless you happen to be a lady leopard. He's been gentle enough with me. Well, that's when he does his creeping. Now, you listen to me, girl. A Marion Parson could straightjacket Jim Fallon and lock him in a box in the bottom of the sea. He'd still slip the gaff and it run over the wedding presents. Men have been known to change. Oh, lady. Even I have been given up by women reformers. The biggest mistake a woman can make is to pick the wrong man and try to make him right. Why don't you just go off somewhere and have a good cry and forget him? I'm reminding you of your duty, Marshal. Duty protected. Alicia, it's started. What do we do? Are you sure? Yes. It feels like any minute. Take it to the hotel. Room 204. 204? That's Jim Fallon's room. Why not? This is all his fault. Lighted windows upstairs, they're his. You get up in the land office ruins, maybe you can pot him from there. Charlie, he doesn't know you. You take the saloon. Baldock, I'll stay out here. You get on the hotel porch. He uh, comes through the lobby, signal me. One ups has got to get him.
going upstairs. Now what have I done? I want to talk to you. Hey, stranger. What will it be? Double straight. Your sister will be all right. What do you mean, thanks to Jim? I'd better get out of here. It might be catching. Now, what's this all about? You and your land grabbers forced them out of their home. I had nothing to do with it. Too bad his father can't be here. I had nothing to do with that either. So for all I care, you can stay on your pious pedestal. I've never placed myself on any pedestal. I'm too full of bad temper. girl. Why, you chigger-bitten Don Juan, you just try pitching hay with her and I'll shoot that lump you call a head right out from under your hat. Forget it. I tried once. Got frostbite in the middle of July. That don't mean she's not stuck on you. You're crazy. Yeah, maybe so. When you signed that deal with French, it was heads you die and tails you get killed. Who do you think's got me looking after you? Alicia Chadwick. I don't believe you. Why should you? Wouldn't mean anything to you. You're gonna have everything you wanted. Gonna be a millionaire. Sure. Why don't you tell the truth just once? Why don't you come clean and admit that all this wine you're guzzling is sour as vinegar? Tell me more. You stinking steak jumper. I'm only trying to save your hide. It's not because I want to, but I promised her. You still like me, don't you? Come on, sweetheart. I want you to watch me thank Alicia for sending you back to me. Let's go. his life protecting you. He should have looked out for himself. When I was a child, I was taught to believe that there was a, a God-given seed of good at the root of everything alive. But I'm beginning to doubt that now. There isn't the slightest bit of good in you.
got your message. What do you want? Come in. Sit down, Judge. Look, I figured out how you can stop Frenchie and Greg from cutting on that land. I had that figured out long ago. But you'd have to confess to subterfuge and intent to defraud when you file those claims for homesteads. And that's a felony. Sit down and draw up an affidavit. What? You heard me. The government will hold all your claim money for forfeit. What do you want me to do? Burst out in tears? Yeah. I've been trying to make a dent in you ever since I got here. Stop trying or you'll break your axe. Get those colonists to logging so they can file. Will you take care of Dora Fig and the dam that's blocking them? Let's pretend I'm Dora Fig. Uh, you thought of everything, didn't you? I admire what you're doing, Fallon. Then keep your mouth shut about it, around everybody. What do you think Frenchie and Greg are going to do when they find out? Just stand there with their hands folded? Just make out that affidavit, will you? There. I'll give you back your good luck piece. You'll need it with those tree wolves. Thanks, Judge. Oh, uh, I've been eating some eating money, too. Want to cover that? It's covered. I'm Ann Deal. Oh, and I'll teach you to think of your soul instead of your belly. Check those through to San Francisco. Hate to see you leave, honey. Sure gonna miss you. Uh-uh. You'll be beating the drums while she's singing her hymns. Happy trip. Oh, uh, just Dora Fig Beach, will you? You'll have to talk to Frenchie about little Dora Fig. Come again? I sell the dam to Frenchie for $25,000. Daisy, honey. That's not funny. What's the matter? Wrong flavor? You're telling the truth. That property was mine. After all, I couldn't live forever on your promises. What promise did I ever break to you? You never broke any. But you never kept any. It took me ten years to get the stars out of my eyes. All the rugs I helped you pull out from under the suckers. I learned. Oh, boy, how I learned. Enough to pull the whole floor right out from under you. Boy, knock me sky high. You'll land on your feet. You always do. That 25,000 will repay me for all the years I've wasted. Yeah, ma'am. I finally got me a stake. Got yourself educated and well healed, huh? Nice work, Daisy. I'm patting myself on the back, too, for being a good teacher. So long, pal. No hard feelings. Thanks, Brother Fallon. Judge Crenshaw told us you let us through the dam. Blessings on me this beautiful day. Frenchie bought the dam out from under me. He's choking the river with logs for nothing. Is this another of thy tricks? Stop the leopard, do not change. Well, it's time to change yours. Why don't you men get some bristles on your back and start the fight? It's your only chance to spring those logs and get back your land. You can't pray that dam out of the way. No, but we can get around it. That old mining railroad on our property. It wouldn't take much new track to bypass the dam and haul the logs to the river below it. Sister, that'll do it. We'll need some rails and tools. I'll swindle somebody out of them. Swindle? Borrow. Sometimes it's all the same. How many of you men worked on this fur track last time? Uh, Judge Crenshaw donated this. Feed your boys good. They work faster. It was very kind of him. And you, too, for helping us. Uh, Sister Chadwick, just between us leopards, keep watching my spots. <laughs> There, we're out of business. Yeah, the way they're cutting timber. How many trestles are there? 
Three. Show me the one nearest the river. feel like the strength of Jeroboam was with us. He must mean Jeremiah. Jeroboam was a scamp. I guess I mean both. See thee later. Oh, tell Mr. Fallon I'll be here until supper time if he needs me. All right. Okay. I thought that one would do it. What was that? We better find out. He's right in there. Why? Why never done? Who is it? Better speak up fast. I think it'll be quicker to get him from below. Let's move. Hey, boss! What happened? They said one more train would crash it. Crash what? The third vessel near the river. Sounds like a train now. Can't be the locomotive not due to one o'clock. Get him to a doctor. Boss, it is a train. Where's Mr. Chadwick? She's in that caboose.
God, we're thanked. God, we're thanked. But no thanks to you, you sanctimonious bunch of jellyfish. They shot Brother Williams, they almost killed her. Now, we can't salvage that train or repair the trestle, and we can't get logs to Tidewater as long as that dam stands in the way. Now, I'm asking you for the last time. Help me smash that dam. Don't hurry. Think it over. You got two whole seconds before I get out of here. Wait! Wait! May God forgive us, Brother Fallon. Lead us, we'll follow. Come on. The men with the dynamite, come with me. Tiny, keep us covered all the time. Right. Now, brothers, you know the job we have to do. Alan's taking over the dam. I think he's going to dynamite us. They're going to blow it up. Why, what's that? Don't move. The hand of judgment's upon you. You brothers with the rope, get busy.
they look different to now. Mrs. Barron, please. Couldn't I? Just one little one, huh? 